I'm in a process of creating the Cells Fabric project. So I've opened the Visual Studio. I'm searching for Cells Fabric. Currently I'm using Visual Studio 2019, but you, if you want, you can create it in 2017 as well. You need to install some SDK. So let me check that if I have the SDK installed. So here you can see I'm getting the option to install the SDK. It means I do not have the SDK installed on that. So I'll click on that and try to make sure I'm installing the SDK which will require to run the solution. The installation is completed now. on and create a new project and I'll call this as in stated service and if you look at, at the left panel we have multiple options to create different different services type so at the moment I am using the dotnet core and using the dotnet core I am going to use stateless service but if you want you can do the stateful actor a stateless ASP.NET core application as well so let's select the stateless service. I need to call stateless API. So here is my service fabric project created successfully, and this is the stateless service. If you check the references, yeah inside the service fabric project which is with this icon you have the services as a reference added so currently i have the service added as in stateless api if but you, in That's future if you are going to add any new services then you would have option to select the other services or to add other services as well let me first of all try to run the service just to make sure it is working fine and then we'll discuss the different configuration options within the service fabric widget. Now let's try and run the service fabric cluster. Before I run, let's try to open the service fabric cluster. You can reset the service fabric cluster from here or switch to one node or five node cluster so this cluster management comes where with the the, the con sdk which you have just now installed so if i go and open manage local cluster it should open the local host for my cluster and then once you have this you should be you should have the detail about your cluster for example the type of application which is a service fabric application one and then inside the application type you have the number of application running and within one application the number of services which are running so at the moment if you can see i have one service running which is this one and this is the partition of the service which I'm running right now and inside the partition you get the node number and information about the node on which this particular service partition is running and if you can see that this is the node which is available for, uh, for the service fabric cluster and you'll find the same details here as well and if I go to the partition node number then node instance name i'll find it here so if i try and run again i have i should have the details available now let's create one rest api here with the service fabric so what i do is i'll right click here on the services add new service fabric service and then 
create a stateless service in the dotnet core basically So here we are saying, okay, I need to have the ASP.NET Core web application, which is of type API. So it will create some controllers for me, this default template basically for me, which I am going to use. So once I've created that, I have now two services. One is the web API and other one is the state latest API, which is available here. So now if I'm going to run, before I do that, let me check what we have here on the startup. On the program.cs, basically, it's the same code. Uh, it is trying to run the register the services as a context. And if I go to the service, Here is the service registration. In the builder, it's trying to run the startup.cs file and trying to register the web API. And here you can define all your key wall configuration, app registration, and dependency injection, and all, all, all sort of things you can define it here in the startup.cs like you are already familiar how do you do that in the ASP.NET Core application or ASP.NET Web API application. The same thing you can do it here. And now if I'm going to run the application for my cluster, I should have the two application running. One is the stateless service and the other one is stateless web API. If you see uh, the service is running right now. And if I go and check the output, is the service running? You can find out the output here. Also on the debug window. Yeah. So this was my weather forecast service. So that was the name of my machine, and then name it the board on which the service was running and the name of the controller. So if I go back to the web API, so here is the package configuration where we have the port number. If you want, you can change the port number. At the moment, it's running on the HTTP, but if you want, you can change the HTTPS configuration. Once you ch change the HTTPS configuration, it might ask you for the SSL uh, certificate thumbprint, so which you need to specify somewhere here in the configuration file. So if you are changing it to HTTPS, then you make sure you are providing the thumbprint information as well, so that it is it's going to work well. Next, if I go to the controller which it is running right now, is using the the forecast controller. So let me go ahead and create a new controller just to make sure we are able to debug the service. So what I'm going to do here is now, I'm going to add a new empty controller, give it a name called a value controller, let's say, which is default in some cases. So this is my value controller, which I'm returning it and I'm going to return What I'm going to do here is sorry, I made a mistake. I have selected something else.
API control instead of MVC, it should be API controller. It's my my mistake. So this is what I was looking for. Now, if I create a new method type, let's say Now I, I'll put a breakpoint here just to make sure I'm able to run hit the breakpoint while running the service locally. So this is how you can create the new controller for your web API and then also you can run and debug your controller on your Visual Studio locally. the API as per the routing rule. So I was making a bit of mistake because our writing routing rule for our API says it should be the name of your website and which is local host, the port number which is 8901 and then name slash API and this slash name of the controller which is values and once I hit that, you can see I have the breakpoint successfully hit it here. And I'm expecting the output here as well, which is this. So this is how you can debug your application or web APIs locally if you want to. I hope this was useful. In the next video, we'll see the more detail about the web API with this service fabric. Stay tuned.